And my wife left before she did, so the daughter next to my wife, she just sold it, her part of that land, I think about a couple of years ago. Mm. And uh, she was living around in the country. Please hit the like and comment button. Please don't make me have to beg. Oh, please. I don't, don't want to beg you, please. I just got a whole long. Many people ask, where can they find my merch? Now you can shop at NostalgicSociety.com. See, my grandfather, my daddy. <clears throat> what year was this? Oh, I was a kid, being four or five years old. So what, what year was that? Because I don't know how old you was born. I was born in 1931. Oh, okay. Okay. And the um. He was working in the barbershop. Right. He was working in the barbershop with a man that my grandfather was sharecropping with, D. Mosley. Uh-huh. That was, that was his son. So some white guy in that barbershop told him to go across to the sundry and get him a Coca-Cola. This right. is what I was told. Right. And he went and got it and came back. That's not what I want, boy. She said, well, she said, what do you want? So he told him another way. He went and got him and brought it back. He said, I used to need to put my foot in your backside. You know, he didn't say backside. Mm -hmm. And he, he was talking to the wrong man. Right. Up to his feet, he picked that little, that little thing. He go to the barber shop, barber's chair, the shining shoes while they're getting a the haircut. Uh -huh. He told that, told that man to face up with that because he was a pretty strong man. He told that man, face up and yet another guy, he came home. I remember this. He told mama, I got to go out, my mama, we got to go out in the country. Cause he said, I don't know where I killed or not, but I tried to. What did we do? We went out in the country with my grand, my grandmama and granddaddy and come back to it at night. Right. And he leave early in the morning, go back. So we have an uncle, he's a painter, he was a preacher, Uncle O.B., Pinkston. He come by this one horse wagon, taking us and moved everything out to the country with my grandmama and grandpa. grandpa. Right. So that's, that's on my mama's side. <clears throat> so that's when my granddaddy told him that this he leaves town because they were afraid of him. Oh, wow. they came by the house, mama said they wouldn't ask him. They wanted him to go fishing with him. Right. And I was told, I was told my daddy didn't do any fishing. You know that's what they were going to do. They were going to go out there and lynch him. That's what they're going to do. Right. But uh, he left, and he left us on my grandmama, my step grandfather. Then my mama left and came down here. They all left us. They, them, they raised us, the three of us. So that's, that's how it was. But that, that's why loads of them come over to the house. My sister's going to spend the night with them. We didn't have too many places to go other than church cousin. Right. But, it, but uh, and uh, we had been there closer, and you know, I lost contact with Lois them when they moved. Right. When I came to Miami, then that's when I found them, that she was here. And then we got up right here in touch with each other. We started keeping in touch with each other. Man. See, I went to school with a husband, Marshall. Right. We called him Z. We called him Z. Oh, yeah. I went to school with him, and he left town before he finished school. He came I came down here, I came to Lyon, went to Joy Way. He came, he got out of right, see what i Right. In fact, I, I used to know all of Zeke's family, you know. But, right. You know, most of them go on. And, yeah, we was all kind of tight, man. <clears throat> and, uh, but your grandmama was tight with her, and, yeah, we lived in Bronx with Georgia. We all, was, we all tied. We kind of grew up together. Right. Yeah. See, I think Lois is the youngest one. I think the youngest one is the sister, I think. Yeah, she's the youngest one, right? Did your, uh, was, was it your mom who uh, owned land in Georgia? No, we, we didn't own any land in Georgia. Yeah, we didn't. Now, my aunt Bert, my 
my mama's sister. Right. And her sister on the outside of the this lad in, in uh, Dublin, Georgia. I don't know what, I know last time I talked to him right before she died, she said, y'all do what you want, you got the okay, I don't have to sign nothing because I'm am, i not coming back there to live. So, so well, how, how did they, how did they own the land or how did they get it? Well, see how black folks get it, okay, let's say, <clears throat> you're a hard working man. Right. The, bad, the man tells you if you clean off, let me say, if you clean off 15 acres of land, you get two acres of land, I give you. Right. And, that, and that's how they can start accumulating the land. Oh. That's the sharecroppers. Right. That was some people did, did that. I know some people didn't have to do that because their old parents did it for them. And that's why they wind up with a poor plantation of, of, of land. Oh. Black folks. I know some I know some black like the Bible on my my uh old my first girlfriend. Right. <laughs> they 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 found got hundred and fifty acres of land. I said, I'm not, no way. Because my daddy, his granddaddy, his his granddaddy. Uh huh. Did what I was talking about. Did what I was telling you about. You were sharecropping? And when they got it it be sharecropping, but the the plantation man tells them the sharecropper, the person working for him, mm -hmm. clean all that. Say, let's say, I'm going to say, no, say, say, clean off 10 to 15 acres of land that no, he won't clean off. And he gives you some expired on land. You can get two acres or one acre of land to clean it off for him. That's how a lot of old people who accumulated some land because of Right, right. That because there's some family are, uh, uh, did that, the great, great family did that. Instead of giving you that 40 acres in a mule, they, they did it that way. Right, okay. My second, my, my second wife up in, uh, up in Georgia, that's where her grandfather had so much land, and, and those people were so sorry, they wouldn't take care of it. They, they sell the timber on the land, and next thing they start selling the piece of the land and that off. So what my ex-mother-in-law did, she had uh, had a survey and cut off 22 or 25 acres of land. That's what she left for her three daughters. Right. But she, my wife left before she did, so the daughter next to my wife, she just sold it, her part of that land, I think about a couple of years ago. Mm. And uh, she was living around in the country. So let me ask you a question. Um, did the did the white people didn't like that you own your own land, or they didn't care if you own your own land? Now, during that time, it was all about control. They didn't want you to own nothing, and they didn't want you to have an education. Right. See, I went to school. Uh, I have books with no banker. We got the books. I got books that the white kids they got. We supposed to have new books. We got the cook books that the white kids had. But let's go back to the land. Let's go back to the land. So, uh, say uh, for example, the person who you cleared the land. Let me ask you a question. When you say clear the land, is that the same as sharecropping and clearing the land? Or? No, clearing the land that you can, can take it off out of the trees. The land might want more farming area. Oh, okay. Give you a piece of land away from where he's talking about. Right. And he did it right. He did it right. He made you the own like give you the deed to it. Right. So that's how you pick that's how a lot of black people uh, uh, accumulated land by doing it that way. Oh, okay. You had to go out there and fight with the snakes and everything else to clear it up. Right, right. They didn't want to do that. Oh, they did do it because they had some money. I was listening because I went all day for one dollar from sun up to sundown mm. flying a mule for one dollar cousin wow i walked two miles to school and two miles back to school right but when i put them old broken down athlete i used to run track i played basketball mm -hmm. i did a high jump i did i did all that kind of stuff <clears throat> but in order for me to go Swainsburg, Statesburg, or someplace to play basketball. Right. I, I, I used to work on Saturday when everybody else was going to town. Right. Because the soil had, had to be tilted or you got to ply. 
to make sure that they get the proper growth and all that stuff. Right. I would do that all day on a Saturday. That was for nothing. I didn't get paid for that now. Right. That was for, but my grandfather had to do that because he didn't know anything about the my age kid. He could read and write. But right. he had a photographic memory. But I would do that so I could be able to go play basketball down the states where Waynesboro, either Stanisville or Millersville. Right. But see, <clears throat> because I wanted to do that, I wanted to graduate from school. I graduated from school, high school cousin at 17 years old. Right. Because I wanted to. Right. I didn't have nobody come. I didn't have nobody to come home and help me my homework. Because the people I was living with, my grandmother was limited to reading and writing. My grandfather couldn't read and write. Period. Wow. But he knew. He knew how to take care of family. See? Right. He learned that. He learned that from his father. Cause he told me one day, I must have been 15 years old. Is the boy you want to know how to treat a woman? I said, yes, sir. You see how to treat me? That's my grandmother. That's how you feel, woman. Man, he said, man, don't have no business putting his hands on no woman. Right. Unless he's going to defend himself. But keep your hands to yourself. Mm. I said, yes, sir. He taught me how to treat that cousin. Man, but whatever man. you tell him it was right, cousin, he never forgot. He had a photograph of memory. He's going to remember mm-hmm. it. Hey, let me ask you a question. What was your worst experience? What was your worst experience dealing? What was your worst experience back in the day? I didn't have been a bad experience because he was a great protector. Right. He said, if you tell somebody something, he said, color folks don't have no money. The word is you're born a handshake was a sealed contract. Right. He taught me that. If you can't do nothing for somebody, let them know early so they can get somebody else to do it. Right. He said, tell the truth, tell the truth. Another thing he said to me, cousin, he said, boy, the bottom of the rail is going to rise to the top. I won't be around to see it. I didn't know what he was talking about. What did he say? What was going to rise to the top? He said, the bottom of the rail, that means the bottom of any sense of what's on the ground, right. rise to the top. And I was, I was able to see that. I saw, able to see a black man and a black family in the highest office in this country. I said, that old man know what he was talking about. That's what he was talking wow. about. Wow. Huh? I said, wow. <laughs> he didn't know what he was talking about. He predicted that. And then he told me another thing. He said, they tell me this in the Bible. He said, that the world was destroyed by water before. They tell me they say it's going to be destroyed by fire, and the people gonna be an enemy to each other, kill each other, parents against children, children against parents, and sisters against brothers. He said, we are going to destroy ourselves. No, he didn't say destroy, he said, we're going to kill ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and I tell you the truth, cousin, we on our way, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Hey, we have, our, you, have no, you ever no, seen, no. have you ever seen a black man hanging in the tree? No, no, I never seen that. My, my grandfather would allow that to have no way for me to do that. He was too protective. Uh, he probably seen it, but not not me, no. No, he was... He, he, he... The white man that he was working on the plantation one time, I was underneath the tree because he told me it was hot, you know? Right. And he said, take a break, boy.